chance to grow. Nine, heart and hands and soul. Ten, for the eyes to see. Oh. Welcome to the Sunday worship. Let us pray and start our Lord's Day prayer service. Dear Heavenly Father, we give thanks to you. Now it's the third week of November, and throughout the year and throughout the week, you have kept, kept us safe. By your grace, you have provided everything we need. Sometimes we forget to count the blessings we have. At this time, we want to learn how to give thanks. And we want to remember what you have done in our lives and what you are planning to do in our lives. Let us truly be full of gratitude and thanksgiving and live a beautiful life of joyful thanksgiving. We pray this in the name of Jesus, our Lord and Savior. Amen. Today's main word of God is coming from Psalm. 136 verses 1 through 3. Psalm 136 verses 1 through 3. Give thanks to the Lord for he is good. His love endures forever. Give thanks to the God of gods. His love endures forever. Give thanks to the Lord of lords. His love endures forever. Let's read from verses 23 to 26 as well. He remembered us in our weakness. His faithful love endures forever. He saved us from our enemies. His faithful love endures forever. He gives food to every living thing. His faithful love endures forever. Give thanks to the God of heaven. His faithful love endures forever. So let me put this verse into the graphic so that we can truly meditate upon this.
this is the season of Thanksgiving. So before we think about this Thanksgiving and all this turkey and pumpkin pie, we want to think about why we kept Thanksgiving Lord's Day. In the Bible, there are three major feasts that God wanted us to keep. And even though it was the Old Testament time, actually these are the practices and shadows that we have to keep after we meet our Lord Savior, Jesus Christ. So number one out of three, there's a Passover. And then number two, the Feast of the Harvest. You might remember we have kept the Feast of the Harvest spiritually. Third, the Feast of Ingathering. Number one, what is the Passover? You should remember this. This is the easy one, I guess. So what is this guy doing? He's putting the blood of lamb on their doorpost. And by doing so, the angel of death passed over his house. So in today's term, we have sins and we're born as sinners. The babies, they are born as the sinners. And now because of our sin, we're doomed to die and we will receive this eternal punishment but by precious blood of Jesus Christ on the cross, he took our bad things, he took our sins and bore our punishment. And then he gave his good things, his righteousness, blessings. And now what we have to do is pray to, pray to God in the name of Jesus Christ. Then he will forgive our sins for the sake of our Lord Jesus Christ. Then we received the guaranteed eternal life in heaven. That's we are keeping this spiritual Passover. That, that's we, what we are thankful for. And number two, the second one is the Feast of the Harvest. And this is the first grains that you harvest. So there are special time you have this first fruits, then you will have more, right? And always we give this first fruits to the Lord first. And this feast of the first fruits, it talks about the resurrection. Jesus died on the cross for our sins, but that was not the end of the story. After all of the, the sufferings and he received the glory through the resurrection. He was risen from the dead and he became the first fruit of this great ha harvest for everybody. So 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 20, it says, but in fact, Christ has been raised from the dead. He is the first of a great harvest of all who have died. People all died and people will die unless we believe in Jesus Christ. But he became the one who showed this resurrection for eternity. And now we will be the other fruits, other harvest fruits after him. That's why we keep the Feast of the Harvest. And now the third one, the, out of the major three feasts in the Bible, it's the Feast of Ingathering. And it has other names too, a Feast of Tabernacles or Feast of Booth. What is the Tabernacle? That was the name for the Tent of God. That was meeting place during the time of Moses in the wilderness. To be specific, in the Mount Sinai, right? Mount Sinai, they made the tabernacle by the plan of the Lord. And they camped in the wilderness for 40 years. So they are remembering that 
by God's grace, they have passed this wilderness journey, and now they enter the land of Canaan. So it's the conclusion of the story. They came out of the Egypt, and they went through the wilderness journey by His grace, and now they enter the land of Canaan, which means for us, heaven. Mark chapter four, twenty six to twenty nine, it says. Jesus is explaining a parable. The kingdom of God is like what? The kingdom of God is like a man who plants a seed in the ground. What happens then? The seed comes up and grows night and day. And it doesn't matter whether the man is asleep or awake, the seed still grows. The man does not know how it grows. Without any help, the earth produces grain. First, the plant grows, then the head, and then all the grain in the head. When the grain is ready, the man cuts it. This is the harvest time. So we're living in this earth, but when we are all gathered, like the feast of the in gathering, we're all gathered in the barn. The stories of heaven, our body and soul will be together, and then we'll live spiritually forever, and that will be the final harvest. And we will camp. We will pitch a tent. We'll make a booth in the kingdom of God forever, and we will live in the dwelling, in the presence of our God. So we keep the third big feast, the feast of the booth. Other name is the feast of ingathering, ingathering, and the feast of tabernacle. So out of these three major feasts, we're keeping the Thanksgiving Day like the feast of booth, and this is for the Thanksgiving. The conclusion of this Bible, the conclusion of the history. Of redemption through Jesus Christ, by God our Father through the Holy Spirit. That's the Christianity, and it's all about the Thanksgiving. Christianity is the religion of Thanksgiving. So it is the recognition you're recognizing the good things in your life can bring you. Some measure of happiness in even the most difficult times. That's the power of Thanksgiving. But actually, this what we believe is everything must be thankful. So worship, in a word, what is worship? Worship is all about Thanksgiving. Psalm one o seven, verses twenty two. It says, "Let's read." Let them offer sacrifices of thanksgiving, and sing joyfully about his glorious acts. Did you catch that? In the Old Testament times, they offered animal sacrifices or grain sacrifices, and now that is called worship at church. And now, when they offered the sacrifices, that was the sacrifices of thanksgiving. Then. If you exchange it to the New Testament terms, that will be the worship of thanksgiving. So our worship, the core of the worship, must be the thanksgiving. But thanks, uh, and then Psalm fifty verses twenty three. I think this verse must be your、um, forever remembering verse. Giving thanks is a sacrifice that truly honors me.、Hmm? When you think about Thanksgiving, what do you think? Do you have to bring something to God? Yes, you do. Yes, you do. Yes, you do. Yes, you do have to bring something to God. Your heart full of Thanksgiving. You just put a ribbon upon yourself, and then inside of this box called yourself, you have to have the Thanksgiving when God opens it. So you bring yourself full of thanksgiving to the house of God, and now you bring a little envelope called the offerings, tithes, and offering. 
well, that could be a, one of the expression of Thanksgiving. So you don't come with empty handed. And also you can bring a sacrifice of praise. You can sing praises together. It doesn't matter if you are in the choir or sitting in the pew and singing along with us. You have to bring some fruits of thanksgiving. And when you actually worship with thanksgiving, that's what truly honors our God, the Father. So without thanksgiving, if you are sitting there and then you're on time for worship and you gave the tithe and offering, but if you are missing the thanksgiving gratitude in your hearts, is it a truly a thanksgiving service that honors God? No, that's what God says. And the prayer is all about thanksgiving too. When do you pray? Before we eat breakfast, lunch, and dinner, and every time when you have uh, snacks and dessert, maybe you give a short time of prayer. Wherever, whenever, when you pray, the prayer must be about thanksgiving. Without saying a word of thanksgiving and gratitude, that's not a complete prayer. Did you know that? So we first call our God and praise our God give thanks to him and say things you're grateful for first then you repent the things and also you bring your prayer request and in the name of jesus christ you with amen you seal that prayer that's how we end that's how we conclude the prayer see call our father god and praise his name and give thanks and repent and offer a list of the requests you want. And in the name of Jesus, amen. That's the five elements that you have to remember in the prayer. But the core of this is a thanksgiving. When you ask something, God, I have a problem. Please listen to my prayer and resolve this prayer problem. And there is a big difference whether you put the thanksgiving into that request or not. By faith, you can even give thanks before it is done because you believe that it will be done. Before it rains, you can give thanks to God by putting an umbrella called the thanksgiving. God, I know you will do something good for me. You will listen to me. You will resolve this problem by your providence. So I'm thankful even though I'm still in that situation. That's how we should pray. So Philippians chapter 4, verses 6, let's read. Do not worry about anything, but pray and ask God for everything you need. And when you pray, always give thanks. <gasps> did I give thanks when we pray? Every time when I pray, did I give thanks? Think about that. If you have missed that, you got it. Now, give thanks. Always give thanks. Always. Always means all the time, without missing, 24 hours, anytime. So, how and when we give thanks? So, think about the things. We call it count your blessings. And we have hymns, count your blessings too. Think about the things you are grateful for. For example, if you took all the blood vessels, vessels are of an average child and lay them out in one line, the line would stretch over 60,000 miles. On the third, it would be closer to 100, 100,000 miles long. So you have that much long vessels, blood vessels in your body. That's amazing. And did you plan to put it in your body? No. Even to the tip of your finger, even to the tip of your toe, even to the tip of your ears, the blood vessel is delivering everything you need. And this 60,000 to 100,000 miles long blood vessels were planted in you 
by the grace of God. That is called a miracle. And that 60,000 to 100,000 miles long blood vessel never blocked. That's why you are still living. Okay? So we can give thanks. And think about the breathing. Um, you have to think and you have to order your hands to move, right? I want to catch that thing, then your body, your hand will move. But how about breathing? Your lung doesn't listen to you. When you black out, let's say you fainted, then your body automatically starts breathing again. That's great, right? Your lungs will gasp for air since you are programmed to inhale and exhale even if you are unconscious. Like when you sleep, the lung doesn't stop inhaling and exhaling air. That's why we are living. If you stop the breathing for about three minutes, you're dying, right? And how about heartbeats? And this heartbeat about 100,000 times a day and pumps about 7,200 liters of blood. In, the, in other words, 1,900 gallons of blood. Thought about this? So we can think about this heartbeats and breathings and all these vessels and then neurosystems in our body. We can be thankful for every, everything. And Thanksgiving is a game changer. God said, in everything, give thanks. Well, there's more to be thankful for than said about. Looking at the glass as, as a half full rather than a half empty, that's the attitude of Thanksgiving, but that's worthily Thanksgiving still. Why? A true Thanksgiving to God is more than a positive thinking. It's a recognition of God who can create something out of nothing. So by faith, that is true. I don't have the thing I need still. We can give thanks because God has a power to give. And if God doesn't give it to you, what does it mean? God is the one who can turn a bad things into good things. Maybe through your poverty. Maybe through your disease, sickness, you can give glory to God. You can comfort others. You never know what good things will be brought through your bad things. That's the beauty of a life of faith in Jesus Christ. So in everything, everything is good things and bad things, past, present, future, everything you can give thanks. That really reminds me and encourages me to give thanks for everything. Sometimes I have things I don't like and there are things that I like, but through all of that, I can give thanks to him. It's a different feeling. Uh, giving thanks is a different thing whether you like or not. Still, you can give thanks because God can do something good from there. So always for everything, you can give thanks. In James chapter 1, 2 and 3, when you have hardships, think about this. Consider it pure joy, pure, 100% pure joy. My brothers and sisters, whenever you face trials of many kinds, all kinds, different kinds, because you know that the testing of your faith produces perseverance, perseverance. So you don't know what it means yet, but when you persevere, when you um, endure, when you are patient, you will see the good result. You will connect the dots until you connect all these dots. You don't know what's going to happen because God causes everything to work together for the good. So until you put all these puzzles together, you don't know what happens. And in the middle of that process, what we can do is uh, give thanks because God plans something good for us, not a bad things for us. God is not our enemy. God is for us, not against us. 
So we have to live a life of thanksgiving to God. But how about a life without thanksgiving? If we live a life without thanksgiving, well, actually, there are the people who claim that they profess, they show that there are、uh, people who believe in God, but they knew God, but they did not give glory to God, and they did not thank Him. There are the people who believe in God and, and who know God. But they did not give glory to God and did not thank Him. Their thinking became useless. God said, "Wow, your thinking then is useless." Their foolish minds were filled with darkness. <gasps> I thought, when you know God, you are filled with the light. But without thanksgiving, you are filled with darkness. That explains everything. A lot of things, right? People who claim. That they know God, but still, sometimes they are darkened in their hearts. Why? Because they lost the Thanksgiving. So, Thanksgiving is a game changer. From foolishness to smartness, from the darkness to the light. And if the saints are living without Thanksgiving, then it's like the dead body. And if you do something, if you work. In the church, without Thanksgiving, then you cannot produce the good fruits, and there's no light following. That explains how we face some、um, not a good results, even though you worked hard at church. So remember, when God parted the Red Sea, He blew His nostril, right? That was enough to pour the recipe, and if you are living a life without thanksgiving, then he will blow you. God blew this full power wind of curse that can happen to you. In Haggai chapter one verses nine says that. Shall we read? You hoped for rich harvest, but they were poor. And when you brought your harvest home, I blew it away. God blew it away. Why? Because my house lies in ruins, says the Lord of Heaven's armies. While all of you are busy building your own fine houses, when you are so busy building your room with the fill filled with games and filled with toys, and God's house, the church was lying in ruins. Oh, because of coronavirus, I cannot clean the church. Because of coronavirus, I cannot take care of the things for God. That cannot be an excuse. That's what God says. And you hope for which, but you were poor because you didn't bring a thanksgiving to God's house. So, life without thanksgiving will be blown up by God. So we have to give thanks to the Lord for He is good and His love endures forever. This is our memory verse, Psalm one thirty six verses one. Again, give thanks to the Lord for He is good; His love endures forever. So let's listen to the song and sing forever. <laughs>
Let's remember that we can give thanks to the Lord in everything and all the time. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, thanks for teaching us about uh, giving thanks during the season of Thanksgiving. Father, we have forgotten what you have done and what we have by your grace. And we have forgotten have a worship with the Thanksgiving and we have forgotten and pray with thanksgiving but now by doing so let us bring a sacrifice of thanksgiving that truly honors you and father let us give glory to god through our thanksgiving and those who love god and those who give thanks you bring everything come together everything for a good thing we believe father if there's any any child children, any people who are suffering badly in the hardships and they feel lonely and they're sick and they're in tears. But Father, please touch us with the comforting heart and comforting voices of the word of God and heal them and ensure them and grant them grace to find the true peace in every season to every situation and every circumstances by the thanksgiving father please remember all those people who are faithful to the worship and bless them with a thousand blessings from above we pray this in the name of jesus christ with thanksgiving amen okay thanks for coming and have a great weekend